City Generator is a very powerful, very easy to use plugin for Unity 3D that dynamically generates endless amounts of objects in a grid style layout. First we will show you how to set up your own assets to be used in the City Generator system. We are going to use the awesome cartoon town and farm models from K4 in this demonstration. Let's grab a few tree prefabs and a few houses as well. Make sure that you put any prefabs that you want spawned in the city generator, then prefabs, then active folder. If they're not in this folder, the system won't know to use them. Now navigate to that folder select all the prefabs and add the city generator asset script to all of them. Setting the asset frequency determines how often the asset will be spawned. High means often, medium is sometimes and low is rarely. The system by default uses the first renderer it finds to determine the object's size when spawning. You can however assign a renderer or a collider to manually determine an object's size. If pivot is on ground is true, then the pivot pos y value If pivot is on ground is true, then the pivot pos y value won't be used to position the object. The pivot pos y value is used to offset your object to sit flush on the ground plane. If random rotation on spawn is true, then a random rotation will be added taking into account the random rotation axis value, which is usually the Y axis, but the option is there to change if you wish. If the random rotation on spawn is false and the spawn rotation isn't 000, then the system will rotate the object to the rotation entered. The system uses X as width and Z as length but sometimes you might want the system to reverse these, so the flip XZ option is available to do this. As the system spawns objects on either side of the street, most of the time you'll want the objects to be facing the street. For instance, a house will always want the front door facing the street. Mark the flip on opposite streets option to true to achieve this. This option goes hand in hand with the opposite spawn rot subtraction values. You must assign a value for any axis, usually the y-axis, so that the system knows how much to rotate the object when it is spawned on the opposite side of the street. A 180 degree spin is a popular value. Now let's go over the city generator prefab. Navigate to the system folder, then drag and drop the city generator prefab into your scene. Select the prefab in the hierarchy, and we will go over the options for the grid generation. The city width and city length determine the total size of your grid. The city ground defaults to zero and can be changed later if required, but is available to tweak now if needed. The block width min and max determines the size of each block of objects before a street is inserted. The street width determines how wide the street spacing will be on generation. The asset frequency low percentage and medium percentage are based on 100%. Tweak these to determine the percentage change of low and medium objects being used. OK, hit generate city when ready and watch your city pop up. This house has its door facing another building, but we need it facing the street when generated. What we can do is change the spawn rotation to 90 degrees and then also set the flip on opposite streets to true. 
Note by default the opposite spawn rot subtraction is at 180 degrees already as this is what we want also. The house will now be spawned at a 90 degree rotation and when spawned on the opposite side of the street it will be rotated by another 180 degrees so that the door will be facing the street still. This next section of the video will show you how the block width, min and max change the grid generation to give you intersection spacing to your generated city. In this section, let's play with the low, medium and high asset frequency per object to determine how these can be utilised. The tree objects have their frequency set to low and currently only get spawned 5% of the time. We want more trees in our generated city, so there are a couple of ways to do this, but let's change the prefab's frequency from low to high to get the system randomly spawning these trees more. Perfect! Plenty more trees in our layout now. Okay, I don't quite like how many red roofed buildings are being spawned, so let's do something about that. First thing to try is to change the asset frequency of the object from high to medium, or in this case, low. Okay, that's better. But even with the city generator prefab having the asset frequency low percentage set to 5%, we are seeing too many. Let's go and change the global percentage chance value on the city generator prefab so that any low frequency objects only have a 0.5% chance of showing up. Much better. Now there's only one of these objects being generated. Let's move most of the object prefabs outside the active folder so that we are only generating a couple of objects into our layout. Everything looks very similar so let's set the random rotation on spawn to true for a building prefab and see what happens. The default random rotation axis is the Y pos, which is correct in this example, so we will leave it as is. There you go, the layout is looking a lot less uniform now. Finally, let's go over clear zones. Clear zones allow you to drop and drag in prefabs that let you determine sections on the grid that you don't want objects to spawn in. It's very easy and hassle free to outline an area you want left alone. Just drop in as many clear zone prefabs as you like, resize them to fit your needs and hit the city generate button. Anything generated inside a clear zone will be removed.
The system isn't just for city generation, you can use it to generate any prefabs you like. We can't wait to see what the Unity community does with the city generator system.